Well hi and welcome back to A Boat Called Wanda. First of all, thank you so much to everybody that put in some comments regarding uh, the holes that I'd covered over in that recess box from the cockpit. Now, it could be that I've made a terrible mistake by covering up those holes, but fortunately nothing bad's going to happen because thanks to my wonderful audience, I know you're going to yell out if I'm doing something stupid. There's been some uh, conflicting comments as to whether they belong there or they don't belong there. Some owners have got those, some haven't. That's certainly given me a lot to think about. A little bit later I'll get that box out and we'll go through it in a little bit more detail to see if we can't piece together what those holes are for uh, and if they should be there or not. Okay, well let's get right back on deck and uh, see what I'm up to. Well I'm so close to having this deck finished. I've got all of the deck sanded down, that last uh, coat of primer has been knocked back. The coach roof is done, the side of the coach roof, the tow rail. There's just one final job that I need to do to the deck and that's to come back and where you can see the primers rubbed through in spots here, uh, I need to convince Rob to get back here with his spray gun and just spray on some primer to cover over these little uh, patches. Another job I've done on the deck is I've gone through and filled up every tiny little pinhole with a, a filling compound called stopper filler I think. Um, it's basically a product I got from a, a car repair uh, company but um, two of the spray painters that have come around to give me quotes have actually recommended getting this product just to fill up any uh, pinholes because it's meant to be one of the best things you can use so I've actually done that for the deck. Now I didn't get a chance to take any video of filling up the pinholes in the deck. When it's time to do the cockpit I'll take some video then. But for now, it's time for me to resume my position in the well of despair. Now it's called the well of despair because first of all it's a long way down there and second, once you get in there it feels like you'll never get out. I spent the best part of yesterday stuck in here hand sanding all the detailed uh, corners and radiuses around the cockpit and just had all the dust falling down on my head and, and making a real mess. Now because it was a toasty 34 degree day up here yesterday and I was pretty much sweating like a murderer, the combination of dust and dripping sweat made this really unsavoury paste that just sort of tended to cover everything and clogged up my sandpaper. This is pretty much a low point of my sanding career I think. I can't wait to get out of the well of despair. Right, I'm just going to make up a little bit of this watertight two-part epoxy filler. Um, I can't be bothered making up um, the wet system because it's such a tiny amount I need and it's just convenient to mix a bit of this together. So it's just sort of guessing one-to-one, -one. so that much of part A versus that much of part B, looks about the same. Give it a good mix up. Okay, let's do it. Uh, start with the easy one. Here. Lovely. Uh, progress the slightly harder ones here. This might be a finger job. Okay, let's put a little bit of this stopper filler on then, see how it works. So first up, acetone. Try and highlight any little dimples or imperfections. So, there's this product, stopper filler. You use this instead of an epoxy filler because it's a lot more uh, or less viscous and just really flows into these holes and it sands off really easily. So it's not designed to sort of cover up any big cracks or anything but just these tiny little uh, pimples or or pinholes. So I spread a bit of that on. Got a nice soft rubber spreader here. Uh, and that should be it just enough to cover over those little dimples. The other great thing about it is it dries in about 15 minutes. I'll be able to sand it in an hour or two. Just actually use my finger 
to get it in and that should rub back nicely. Oh man, that's my time done in the well of despair. I'm out of that well now. This is the third day working on the cockpit and um, it's all sanded. Um, there's a lot of little sort of detailed sanding to do and um, again it's about 33 degrees up here in the top of the boat uh, in a warm day outside so uh, yeah it's been pretty uncomfortable uh, and it's a pretty dirty job as you can see. Yeah but now hopefully I can get onto something a little bit more fun. Well I've brought this little mischief maker out again uh, and the reason for that is there's a job here that I've been putting off for a while. Uh, you might remember that when I recorded the deck, I had to leave a little section on the tow rail and against the coach roof to give me a piece of laminate to tie the new laminate back into the old laminate. Um, and so it was too hard to get that uh, last piece of core out. So I had to leave that behind and it was quite wet. That has actually gone down a little bit, well, quite a bit actually on its own accord. So that is the new deck. That's the new core that I put in there. You can see it's really low. And there should be a section around here where I had to leave the old deck behind. There we go. Okay. So that's it there. And then it should be right over to the tow rail. And then we're back to the new core. New core, old core. So the way I'm going to deal with this last remaining bit of uh, wet core is just to drill a heap of holes from inside and use a dehumidifier and um, some heat to try and dry that out. I know that now is not the right time to be going on about this, but it just amazes me how there's freaking wiring everywhere and it's all just shit. I mean, look at this. Oh. A red and a brown going nowhere into there. This is the old engine loom for the Volvo Penta, which they couldn't be asked taking out when they changed it over to the Yanmar. Um, oh, I know, let's make a little switch here. What does this do? I don't know. This one's broken. Look at this lovely joinery work. It's just spaghetti. Everywhere you look, it's spaghetti. Oh, Two little yellow wires with clips on them. How handy. Where do they go? F knows. That's quite nice. That must be how big Rassi. But this, what the hell is this? Anyway, as I said, best not to get too worried about it. I'm here to try and dry out this area and try and suck the uh, moisture out of this last bit of core in the tow rail here. That's my job. I need to focus on that. Yeah, so the only thing I, I will do now is just cut away some of these hoses that are making it hard to get in and out. These are the vents that go to there from the water tank. Out with the old. Oh, that was satisfying. Um, yeah, I've just drilled a heap of 8mm uh, holes in the underside of this skin through into the old core in the hope that this will help dry it out. Right, well let's have a little peek in here. Now that everything's set up, I've got that cut out blanked over and uh, those are blanked over as well. And in here, we have our toasty warm dry environment, a combination of the dehumidifier and uh, the 400 watt light which actually puts out a lot of heat which is aimed up pointing at the top there so uh, that seems to be creating a nice toasty environment okay and then on my uh, readout here i can see that the temperature is 26 degrees and the humidity is 48 percent okay well that seems to be doing what it's meant to be doing it's only been running for 12 hours so i'll give it a couple more days and then i'll get the moisture meter out again and get back on there and uh, hopefully see it drop a little bit fingers crossed. Right, we've got a little job to do next, uh, which I'm not quite mentally prepared for. And the reason for that is because it involves part of actually putting the boat back together. And uh, psychologically, I'm not ready for that because I wanted to get everything uh, pulled back and everything painted and then start the process of um, putting things back together. But unfortunately, I can't really wait for the deck to be painted before I start to put these back in. 
um, because there's a dependency on painting based upon where these uh, scuppers are positioned. Now a scupper is just a pirate word for a device that takes water through the deck to drain it out. So this goes along the tow rail and then there's a hose connected to it down through a um, seacock and then out through the bottom of the boat beneath the water line. So basically the water comes down the tow rail, out through here and out the boat. And the reason why I need to put this in before I start painting it is because I need to position this and prepare how I'm going to lay out the decks um, non-skid. So I'm going to have sections of non-skid along the deck which is that really rough sort of material that you paint down but around that non-skid I want a nice smooth glossy border so that border will go along the tow rail and then circle around the non-skid patches um, and because this is embedded right against the tow rail I don't want to just put this down in like a bed of uh, non-skid I want to have a nice smooth border that follows this curve around um, within the non-skid so it sort of looks like it's meant to be there rather than just plopped in the middle. Um, so we'll get up on deck and I'll show you a little bit more about that but first up um, I've got to clean them up and to do that I'm going to try a bit of an experiment and I'm not quite sure that this is going to work I don't quite believe it but uh, hey ho let's have a go and see what happens. Okay one can of coke and apparently it needs to be the good old-fashioned sugary type. And scuppers go into here. One, two, three. Uh, cover them over. And just leave it, I guess. Come back and have a look at that a bit later on. Now there's a couple of different ways I can go about finding the location and drilling the hole down for the scupper to go through the deck or well, the four scuppers because there's four to go around the decks here. The first way is to use this tool to find the rough location within about eight millimeters um, of where the original hole is and I know that because I've um, just taped a bolt to the underside of the cutout. So because I want this to nestle up against the side of the tow rail like that, that's about where I'd want to start drilling through. Now with this approach the nice thing is I've got plenty of room up here to work on deck to get the drill and to get the right angle um, so it'd be very easy to drill down through this way. Um, the risks are it's not going to be in exactly the same position as the last hole so I'd need to pretty much cover up that original hole first. And you can see this is where I've just taped on a a little nut on the other side to give the sensor uh, um, some metal to locate. So um, the downside with that approach is I really should cover up this hole first. So this is basically just the bottom skin um, and you can see the foam core there. So you know the hole's not going to be exactly here. It could be a little bit offset um, and to avoid that I should really just cover this hole up and laminate over it so I've got a nice fresh um, skin to drill through. Now the second approach is to just use this existing hole and drill through up here from the underside. The problem with that approach by drilling in from the underside is there's a risk that if I don't get the angle exactly right um, then it could be too close to the tow rail or too far away from the tow rail. The other thing to consider is originally there was about nine millimeters of teak that that hole would have gone through so the whole position of where the scupper could have been with that additional depth of teak uh, means that the hole might not be exactly right to have this mounted straight on deck. So the biggest risk is I go downstairs, I get my hole saw, I drill up through the deck from the underside and I get a hole that's too close to the tow rail and that scupper ends up um, squeezing in too tightly or butting against it and not being able to sit down properly. Um, that's why I'm reluctant to do it that way. Right, well I'll try with the hardest one of all, which is this one in this uh, electrical box. As you can, well maybe you can't see, there's a hole up there and this would be near impossible to get a drill in here underneath and up through that hole. So coming from the deck down is going to be the much better option. So just a matter of how easy it is to close this up. Okay, well that's the hardest one done. Um, I'm not sure if you can see up there, but I've just sort of ground around the uh, perimeter of that hole so that I can uh, fill it up with something. 
let's move on to the next one. Okay, move on to this one. There's a little bit more room to manoeuvre. Okay, well there's a little bit more space here in this cockpit locker and I've got one of the scuppers up there, the second scupper is up there. Um, I've also got, this was the other side of the through hole that I've already closed up from the outside. I might just take this back and put some laminate here. Let's do some laminating. Right, well let's do this. We'll start with the easy one. I knew as soon as I started discussing the options and the pros and cons that I was going to end up doing it this way. I don't know if it's overkill, but it just seems like it's probably the right thing to do. So I'm just going to wet this out uh, without this part here where there's a gap between the core and the bottom skin. You can see that's the new core I put in there. Okay, nicely wetted out. Uh, now I've got a little disc here, so I might as well give that a bit of a wet out as well. Right, thickened epoxy. Now I made this actually super thick. Now, bung this in here. I think you can see where I'm going with this. And then finally the last step is to laminate the bottom to just keep it all together. So the idea behind this is when I drill the holes from the top of the deck, if it's not an exact match to the existing one, if it's offset a little bit, I'm not going to end up just elongating this hole. Um, so I'll still have a perfect 32 millimeter hole so that when I put the backing nut on, it's going to have a nice uh, square surface and not have this sort of, you know, half a sort of cut out hole and half solid um, lower core. That's the idea. Okay, one down, three to go. Okay, well I can end the update here. So as you can see here, I got Robin a couple of days back and uh, we went round and put three layers on using his um, spray equipment a primer and we just basically spot filled anywhere where I'd gone through the primer back to the substrate. Now I was a little bit concerned because Rob did seem to get quite trigger happy and ultimately it was up to me to do all the sanding. And that's what I've just done. I've spent two days, two full days, um, with a 400 grit foam backed pad just hand sanding everything again. And so yeah, it's done. I'll never have to get up here and sand again in preparation for painting. So that's a massive uh, milestone. Now, before I end the update, I just wanted to go back to the question of the holes in this uh, cockpit uh, glove box. It's the word I like. Now, thanks to people that um, have 352s and wrote in. I think the total is um, four people wrote in and said that they all found uh, the holes in this glove box. 
However, three said that they were on the starboard side and one said it was on the port side. Now for me, this was also on the port side. So it's kind of a little bit confusing as to what the holes are really for. I could be wrong, but I don't really think that they are to vent out the engine room or to let hot air out of the, out of the boat. Um, and that's for a couple of reasons. Now first up, if these were holes to provide a critical ventilation function, I don't think you just put them into the top of this um, cockpit box because all it takes is a rolled up jacket in here and, and the vents are blocked. Uh, second reason is there's already a large vent on the starboard side combing and as you can see here that actually goes into this cockpit locker so effectively that would vent the engine. Um, and finally I don't think there's a path for the air to get from the engine room into the cockpit locker so it can then get out via the vents. Um, but to confirm that, it would be great if those that have a 352 and have written in could uh, just take a look the next time they're down there and see if you've got these cutouts on the starboard side of the engine room as I have here. Originally these had ducting in it for the diesel heater and I don't know if the holes were specifically for the ducting for the diesel heater or if they were factory installed. If they were like that from the factory then okay maybe the heat goes through those from the engine room to the cockpit locker and then out via the um, vents. My theory is that they were holes to basically air out the cockpit locker, which is quite large, until they come along with a vent on the starboard combing of the cockpit side. Um, and so then they put them on the port side, and because this reaches down into um, that hanging locker in the aft cabin, I think basically it's to vent out the hanging locker so that you can dry clothes. So that's my theory. If anybody else has got another idea, then uh, let me know. So thanks for watching. Um, next update, I think I'm going to take a break from sanding and I'm not going to start the top sides yet. I'm probably going to get stuck into pulling the fuel tank out of the bilge because that's going to be much more exciting than sanding. And I really do need a break from that sanding. So yeah, come back and have a look at uh, that next time. All right, I'll see you then. Cheers.